I'd admit it. We're lost, right? We are not lost. I happen to have a very highly developed sense of direction. You know something, Daniel? Homing pigeons have been known to stop and ask the way for me. Well, where are we? Then? All right, where are we? Oh, uh, 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 Scotland. Scotland. I'm not even sure of that even. Joe, you probably are. down there with the hound of the basket. Have you any idea which way is north? Joe, where are you? <whistles> Could be well, in trouble. Poor chap, he survived in there for a while. Listen to this. Can move only one arm, desperate pain. I know I'm dying. Anyone finding me, please burn formula. World not ready. It ends there. Does that look like the formula? I wonder if that's him. Yes, that's him, all right. Name Brian Wilk. Potato on the exit visa. He's been lying here 12 years. I'm glad to see the press have given you credit for finding the wreck. That's excellent, excellent. Uh, Daniel, mm. I have a feeling that he sent us out there knowing we would find it. Well, not knowing, hoping. You know, all of these have been killed by a fellow named General A.J. Bulstrode. I guess he hated animals. You see, you were not the first to find that wreck. About a year ago, an escaped convict hid out in that holler. He didn't report it? Well, he was hardly in a position to. He was only recaptured a week or so ago. I interviewed him about quite a different matter. He happened to mention it, and I put two and two together. Judge, would you tell us what the two and two add up to? Brian Wilk was a widower, one child. She'd be about 21 now. Her whereabouts are unknown. He was a brilliant scientist, brilliant. He made some remarkable strides in the field of uh, synthetics. Does anyone know why Wilk vanished? theories, rumors. He was working on an invention of his own. Nobody knows what. His friend said he was very worried and depressed. He even expressed fears for his life. Have you really got the gout? Well, of course I have. Mm -hmm. You mean it's no joke, huh? Well, it's far from it. The merest touch is agony. Mm. 
You mean if I would just touch it like that, it would... <laughs> the least he could do is answer the question. He just did. Go on about Wilt, Judge. I'm not going to do anything. Just go on about Wilt, Judge. Just sit here. Well, a week before that last flight, he was seen in the company of a known Iron Curtain agent. It was always presumed he defected. Oh, Iron Curtain, yeah, right, and defected. And uh, do you go along with that? Well, I like to keep an open mind. All right, Judge, so much for history. Now, would you mind telling us why you insisted on us keeping quiet about his last note? And uh, this, which I assume is the mystery formula. Well, I think that certain parties who've read this newspaper might become interested in the next few days. He's using us as bait, Brett. Daniel in the lion's den again. Might be interesting to get a line on who killed Brian Wilk. The crash killed him. Oh, no. There was an explosive device in the plane. isn't it? You're a flat tire, sir. Well, thanks. That saves me calling in a second opinion. Yeah, this side, too. Would you believe it? Back to you, sir. Isn't it lucky for us that you showed up? Well, is this uh, how you drum up business? It never fails. Get in and no tricks. I did warn him. You know how impetuous Americans are. If this uh, kidnap is in aid of ransom, then I must tell you, we don't know a soul who'd pay anything to have us released. Or well, if it isn't, then what is it in aid of? No comment. How are you feeling? No comment. It's all right, officer. You really should do something about these vehicles being double parked. Well, you can hardly cross the road in safety. Excuse me. Excuse me, would you move over? Thank hey, you. what do you think you're doing? Sorry. Help! Sorry. Help! This is an emergency. Get out! It's an emergency. Help! 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 Stop the car. Will you cut it out? You'll have us in the curb. Who do you think you are? A hijacker. What are you talking about? A friend of mine in that taxi up there has been killed. I don't care. Why choose me? I'll get fired. Well, that's what rockets are for, isn't it? What's he doing anyway? I'm supposed to be cruising at, at five miles an hour, handing out five pounds to anyone with a. a Ice cream label in their front window. Well, if I see one, I'll stop.
get off my rocket. I don't suppose you would uh, consider giving me a lift home? No, I would not. Yes, I thought not. I don't blame you. Oh, by the way, what is Space Queen, anyway? A deodorant soap. Try it. I think you stink. If I sit up. This is not a sightseeing tour. You stay right where you are. Getting close now. You put your scarf over your eyes. Do it. We're nearly there. Where are they? I don't know what you're talking about. Brett got down to the uh, wreck before I did. If there were any papers or anything, he would have got them. I don't know. Why don't you go and uh, talk to him? We hope to, but he proved a little more elusive than you. Uh, well, then just call him on the phone. It might be as well to tell him about our plans for you. The number is nine... No. Please. Brett Sinclair. Your Lordship. Daniel? Well, it's not Florence of Arabia, you... Where are you? Listen well, Lord Sinclair. I'm listening well. Well? You will hand over those papers at a given rendezvous within half an hour, or your friend will be killed. Go ahead and kill him. I do not think you can be serious, Lord Sinclair. Why not? If you do kill him, where would it leave you? With one body, one murder charge, and no papers. Now, are you ready to listen to my proposition? I am listening. I want my friend released immediately and delivered to the Mandate Club. I am leaving now for the Chelsea Police Station. If Daniel does not call me there within 20 minutes, I shall assume that he is dead. Then I shall hand over the papers to the police. Have you got that? I hear what you are saying. Good. Oh, if you should kill him, please call me back. I'd like to send flowers. There you are, sir. Thank you. Ah, uh, thanks a lot, Sir Galahad. 
What are you looking so surly about? I got you out, didn't I? Are you trying to give me a heart attack? It's impossible, Daniel. You do not have a heart. You know, you would have looked really stupid if they went ahead and killed me. Dumb you are. Well, I don't know, Daniel. Dumb. It'll take more than that to make me look stupid. Hello? Who's sending telegrams? Why don't you open it and find out? No. I asked for that, but yeah, right. It's not my birthday by any chance. No, it's not. Listen to this. Things are moving. Lord Sinclair and Mr. Wilde invited to call at Sir Hugo Chalmers' office. British and Arabian Oil Corporation building immediately. When they may hear something to their advantage. I wonder what that means. Well, it means that your soft-voiced friend is now willing to talk in a more civilized way. Note the word Arabian. Ah, Lord Sinclair? Sir Hugo? Mr. Watt. Sir Hugo, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. How very civil of you to have come so promptly. Well, we're very civil people, yes, we are. Oh, especially when people are civil to us. Yes, sir. Hmm. Well, uh, do sit down. Thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, we haven't met everybody. I beg your pardon. Uh, this is Mr. Fawzi. He's the president of our Mideast Corporation. Mr. Fawzi? Mr. Fawzi is in complete agreement with the proposition that I'm about to put to you. Oh, let's hope we all agree. I am absolutely positive that we shall. We are inviting you to join the board of British and Arabian at a salary of £50,000 a year uh, each. That is $120,000, Mr. Wilde. I know how much it is, Sir Hugo. We shall continue to pay you this sum for a minimum of 20 years, whether you remain on the board or not. That is a guarantee of $2,400,000, Mr. Wilde. <laughs> well, well, I'm beginning to think there's a, a lot of money in this oil business, Daniel. A lot, Lord Sinclair. And a lot of shareholders and workers to be protected. Well, what do you say? Daniel here knows more about the oil business than I do. All I know is the price of petrol goes up from week to week. Knowledge is not important, Lord Sinclair. Then what is? What can we possibly do for you? You have kept discreetly quiet about one particular matter. There can be only one possible reason for that. And it seems to me that five million dollars between you is a reasonable price for your cooperation. My cue for asking, what exactly do you want us to do? You're in a high price game, Sinclair. There are others who wouldn't even start to bargain. I should take the money and live to enjoy it. Are you threatening us? I'm offering you a fortune, man. I don't need to use threats. I'll give you... Uh, 24 hours to decide. All you have to do is return with Wilkes' formula. Sir Hugo, what exactly is Wilkes' formula? You don't know. No, he doesn't know. <laughs> I'm not saying He's I not don't saying know. That. On the other hand, I'm not saying I do know. Right. All I'm asking you is to tell us. It's a high-grade synthetic motor fuel that can be manufactured for next to nothing. Well? Uh, uh, we're not saying yes and we're not saying no. But you got 24 hours to double it. Come along, your lordship. We'll let ourselves out then. It's remarkable how predictable they are. That's just what I told you it would cut. Ten million dollars. Peanuts. Sinclair? Yes. I'm Carla Wilk. Well, please come in. Thank you. I've uh, been expecting you, Miss Wilk. Oh? May I offer you a drink? No, thank you. I don't drink. No, then please make yourself comfortable. All, right. All this must have come as a bit of a shock to you. Hmm? In some ways, yes. In others, a relief. I never really believed Daddy had defected. It wasn't like him. Forgive me for asking, but a lot of funny things have been happening. Do you have any proof of your identity? No. Should I have? A driver's license. I'm sorry, I don't drive. Oh, dear. Don't worry. If you had been a phony, you would have come armed with a ten-page dossier. 
But why should anyone pretend to be me? You had no idea that your father was carrying papers that a lot of people want. No. But then I was only nine when he died. Yes. I'm uh, having dinner with someone. The man who was with me when I found the plane, to be exact. Would you like to join us? Yes, thank you. Excuse me, but you don't happen to know Mr. Daniel Wilde by sight, do you? Yes, you'll find him right over there, miss. Excuse me, you Mr. Daniel Wilde? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Daniel Wilde. Well, hello. Uh, uh, sit down. <laughs> well, please forgive me, but they told me at your hotel I might find you here. Oh, they did. Well, I remember to uh, tip the porter. What can I do for you? Well, my name's Carla Wilk. Carla Wilk? <laughs> I've been expecting you. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Uh, thank you. Uh, is there anything I can get for you? No, thank you. I don't drink. Thank you. Goodbye, Eddie. Uh, this must have come as a bit of a shock to you, I guess. Huh? Well, yes, it was. Oh. But I always knew Daddy wasn't a traitor. You don't mind me saying we found some photographs among your father's possessions. There was a picture of you. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, you were small and dark, and here you are, big and blonde. Well, I have a confession to make. Oh? I am dark. Really? Well, I can prove it to you. Here? No, my hairdresser. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Are you going to be a surprise to someone? The guy who found the plane with me. Hi, Brett. Daniel, uh, have I I'm got a surprise, surprise, surprise for you? Why meet don't you Carla Wilk. Will... What did you say? I said meet Carla Wilk. No, I said that. Oh, uh, that's where I heard it, I guess. It's a small world, isn't mm -hmm. it? Too, mm -hmm. too many. Yes, by so. one. Yeah. <clears throat> well, will the real uh, Carla Wilk please sit down? Oh, yes, what a good idea. There you are. Allow me. <sighs> I don't know who this imposter is. Oh, Carla Wilk, she says. You don't think you're going to get away with this, do you? Well, she's certainly trying, I'll tell you that. Daniel. Yeah, what? I think that we should have Carla Wilk contest. Right, I agree with you. I don't know if this is some kind of joke, but the next time I get in touch with you, it'll be through my lawyer. Oh, outrage dignity. Nice. <laughs> you know, Daniel, the best form of defense is attack. Now then. Just a minute. I want a word with her. You want to bet which one is the pony? I'd say it's even money. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You would. I have a feeling we haven't met the real Carla Wilk yet. You mean there's more to come? Lord Sinclair? Mr. Wilde? Hmm. In that order. I was told I might find you here. You don't know me. You didn't even look like Carla Wilk. Andreas Theopolos. I was Brian Wilkes' partner. Open it. Open it, Lord Sinclair. Nothing secret about it at all. Copy of a formal contract signed by Brian Wilkes and myself on behalf of a consortium who were going to manufacture and distribute his fuel on a worldwide scale. Signed a few days before his death. It was still binding. All the evidence points to his desire to unbind it. He was trying to leave the country. He was a fool. You normally offer this much money to fools? I meant his mental state in those last few days. What went wrong with him? He claimed there had been two attempts on his life. Perhaps there had. He refused to believe we could give him protection, so he panicked and ran. Uh, flew into a ravine. It would never have happened had he stayed. We'd have had a 24-hour guard on him. You have heard of me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Who hasn't? then you will know I am an excessively wealthy man. Come and see me tomorrow. Forget Hugo Chalmers' offer. It will be chicken feed compared to what you will make with me. Uh, a moral point. What right have we to make anything out of something which is not ours? Frankly, I've never much worried over moral points. Find us keepers, don't they say? We can do nothing without the permission of his daughter, Carla. It is her inheritance. Have you found her? I will see you tomorrow, gentlemen. Good evening. You know, if we're not careful, we're going to end up the richest stiffs in the neighborhood. Daniel, a call to the judge is indicated. 
Visitor. Oh, these are teas. I was under the impression this was your pad. Yes, I was rather under that impression. You stand quite still, please. If you will kindly tell me where the formula is, it will save us making a mess, Lord Sinclair. Oh. I really think he should contact the British authorities. You see, we handed everything we found over to them. And yet you still waste your time talking to Sir Hugo Chalmers and Andreas the Oblas. Oh, well, excuse us. We'll talk to anybody. <laughs> Alex. Not very polite. Alex. Yeah, Duh. Now, you don't think I would really have hidden this uh, formula where a ham-fisted oaf like that could find it, do you? I think you might. On the assumption that all British aristocrats are mentally deficient and you be quiet. No. On the assumption that you are expecting a more business-like proposition than this. You know, playing one capitalist against another. You have a very devious mind. I, I must congratulate you. So far, you have played the power game very cleverly. <clears throat> Since we are talking business, how much are you offering? To you? Nothing. On your back. Why should I pay you for something to which you have no right? <laughs> well, that's the worst offer we've had all day. Mr. Wilkes's own wishes were that my people should have the formula. He was disgusted with your society and intended leaving the country. Now, um, congratulations. That is original. <laughs> Behind the books. Smart. Now, do not try to follow me. My friend here will remain outside as cover until I have, uh, so to speak, left your territorial waters. Mm -hmm. Safe in your embassy. Oh, he thinks of everything, doesn't he? As a professional, I have to. Meanwhile, console yourselves. I may have saved your lives. You are in deep water. Too deep for amateur. <laughs> Please, you I must forgive my friend. You know these Americans, they never know when they're beaten. Yeah, you are a sensible man, Lord Sinclair. My friend there, he does not miss. I can see that. Now, once again, I must apologize for the mess. Oh, please put it down as an undiplomatic incident. You British, you are such good losers. Oh. And remember, I am only carrying out Mr. Wilkes's wishes. Are you crazy? First you hide it where any dum-dum can find it. Yes, it wasn't a very good place, was it? Then you hand it over, just like that. Well, and then I clocked you and saved your life again. Uh, do you have any idea where that formula is going? Well, I could make one of six guesses. And you let it go, just like that? Just like that. And just think, if I hadn't hit you, you wouldn't have lived long enough to know that I spent a good hour making out a phony formula. <laughs> I've no idea what they'll make of it, but it certainly won't be high-grade fuel. All right, where is it? I can't tell you, Daniel. What? Well, the next time they kidnap you, they may try torture, and I think you'd break. Nobody's going to kidnap me, and there's going to be no torture, and I'm not going to break. And keep out of dark alleys. After a day like today, what could happen?
sir. Come on, I'll take you upstairs. What's your name? Uh, it's Carter. Car Carter Wolf. Isn't everybody? <clears throat> Drink that. Did you get a look at them? Same guys that kidnapped me. How are you feeling now? Uh, I'll be all right. I'm just a bit groggy. Where are you staying? I haven't arranged anywhere to stay. I, I only came in from Paris an hour ago. Well, that settles it. You stay in my guest room. Come on, I'll show you the way. Where'd you lead to things? At the terminal. Call me if there's anything you need. Hello. Well, rifling handbags again, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I think we've got the right one. Now the action will start. Thank you, my dear. I've no doubt that you are indeed who you say you are. But of course I am. But I just don't understand why anyone should pretend to be me. Well, there are a number of people who are vitally interested in your father's invention. Have you any idea where he was going when he crashed? Yes, he left me a letter. He said that most people would believe he'd defected, but his motives weren't political. He felt that what he'd discovered shouldn't belong to any one business or country. He wanted it to belong to the world. Noble, if naive. I don't think so. But what's your interest in all this? I simply want to see justice done, however late. You see, the crash that killed your father wasn't an accident. It was murder. Do you know who was responsible? Well, the field is wide open. The orders could have been given by Sir Hugo Chalmers. And then there's that group who tried to abduct you last night. We don't know who they're working for. Another possibility is Andreas Theopolis. Mean something to you? An old man in a wheelchair. Yes, yes, my father used to see a lot of him. Well, that old man in a wheelchair is willing to make you one of the richest women in the world. Don't understand. He'll explain it to you. I've arranged to meet him this morning. We'd better go. Judge? He'll let me know what happens? Oh, yes, of course. Where's Danny? Well, he's trying to get a lead on the house where he was taken to yesterday. I don't think he has much hope. All we have is a general idea of the direction the taxi was heading for when I lost it. Just keep going straight. The contract gives you 25% of the profits worldwide. It will amount to an immense fortune. When your father's discovery is manufactured, there will be a revolution. Oil and its byproducts will become as outdated as the use of leeches in medicine. And that's a good thing. But of course, the oil wells of the world are running dry. This will be of tremendous benefit to humanity. I know it's what your father would have wanted. In that case, why did he want to rescind the contract? That's a good question. Do you have a good answer? I can only guess. He was a very disturbed man. Idealism and panic do tend to make for muddled thinking. And now, if you will sign the contract, we are prepared to make an initial payment of $12 million in advance of royalties. It's the best offer we've heard all morning. You can't go in there. My dear, he's going to see me whether he likes it or not. Don't. Hey, nothing to do with you. An unexpected surprise, Sir Hugo. Thank you, Miss Jones. Thank you. You are just in time to witness the signing of our contract. Miss Well, I must beg you not to. I'm speaking not only for my own sake, but for the sake of... The sake of humanity? Whomever you sign with, you'll be fantastically rich. But to do business with this consortium, would be a disaster. For whom? For the world. For the whole world. Now, 
The oil business gives employment to millions of people, literally millions. You'll be depriving them of their livelihood. You'll be wrecking the economy of a number of countries. <laughs> Sentimental nonsense. With us, there would be no such danger. We would guarantee to release the process over a period of from 20 to 50 years. <laughs> you are living in a dream. Since the time of the Industrial Revolution and into the computer age, people have cried out against progress. The world can only benefit from this. You would bury this for a hundred years to safeguard your interests. It wouldn't be the first time that a discovery was suppressed by big business. I think it's your move, Carla. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. Before you decide anything, there's one thing you ought to know. Your father was trying to get out of his contract with this man. She knows that. Does she also know that you sabotaged his plan, that you killed him? If you wish to do business with your father's murderer, you must go ahead. It's up to you. There's nothing more I can say. False, it's a good exit line. Lies, of course. Your father was my friend. You must believe that, Carla. It doesn't matter much either way. I shall sign nothing for the moment. What? I'm sorry, but I must have time. Time? I've waited long enough already. Then a day or so should make no difference. Nice shot. Yours? Yours? If you can make us see sense. Must be Christmas. Everyone wants to give me things. Good day, sir. for a walk, just to clear my head. Well, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why not? Look. He's been there for the last hour. Because of me? It's possible. Well, they have tried money. Now they may use something less subtle. Oh, I don't know what to do. Were you here yesterday about the same time? Yes, I come here every day. It's a shortcut from school. Oh. Did you do that uh, railing with your ruler? Yes, I do that every day too, but the people in the houses hate it, and so do the dogs. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. <laughs> 
keep the change. Deborah, get him going. Sinclair? Danny? You found it? Well, where is it? Mm-hmm. Corner house, Vicarage Way, yeah. Iron gates. Got it. Listen, the house is empty. There's no one here, but this is the place I was held. I know it. All right, I'll get there as fast as I can. Okay. Carlo, I don't want you to answer the phone or open the door. It's important, you understand? I'll be back soon. away for three days. I don't know about people bringing you in. Did you leave the keys with anybody? No, I never do. No. I think you're... Now don't move or I'll break your neck. bother with any explanations, Mr. Wilde. Hmm. Well, we've got him here now. Yes. Oh, naturally. I'll make the arrangements. It's just that I thought he might be useful to us before we... Hmm. Well, you can decide that when you get there.
Now, what do you want to do? Want to play some cards? Huh? Want to shoot some dice? You've got to amuse me, remember. You kidnapped me. I mean, I'm not here because I want to be here, so do something. Break out the cards. from me. Just keep away. I want nothing to do with oh, you. Please. You come near Calm me and I'll call down. the police. All I want to do is talk. Then talk to somebody else. I'm going. You are not going anywhere until you listen to what I have to say. Then if you decide to say no, you can say goodbye. I've decided no. Goodbye. You are going to hear what I have to say, like it or not. That's a real beautiful collection of uh, dolls you got there. I like it. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Is it worth it? Is what worth it? I mean, to jeopardize all of it, to be busted up, who knows what happens, a nice-looking house like this. <laughs> all for trying to knock me off. Doesn't make sense. But that's how I got it. I was a clerk, underpaid, no prospect. Then I was asked to install a small explosive charge in an aeroplane. Now, I have a large salary, a future, and no regrets. Who gave you your first break? I'll introduce you. That'll be him now. Good day. I am the Space Queen Soap Girl. And if you have three of our wrappers and can answer one simple question, you can win five pounds and a chance to spend a day with the movie star of your choice. No, I, I, I don't like uh, film stars. Uh... Well, at least take a free sample. No. no, thank you. No. Come in, come in. Come on in. Join the party. Daniel, why don't you ask him who he's working for? Oh, he won't tell you. I've asked him already. Oh, <laughs> loyalty. I like that in a man. Mm, yeah, admirable quality. Certainly is. Yes. A leader who can inspire that sort of devotion must have something special. Mm. I'd like to meet him. Yeah, well, I think you've got your wish granted for you. Do you want to go or shall I? I think we should all go. All right, come on. Let's take along, Piper. Come on, Piper. Uh, Good afternoon. Come on in. We've been expecting you. Yeah. Watch it! what to do and I called Judge Fulton. He said that here would be a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you decide? Well, Carla wanted to wait until all the interested parties were here. Sir Hugo Chalmers is still to come. Uh, well, I'm afraid he won't be with us. He's with his doctors now. Yeah, it was a little run down. Run down. May I have the formula? I'm afraid I don't have it, Judge. Well, Brett left it with me. I thought this might be a safer place as any. Your father died trying to take that formula to the East. That was what he wanted. Thank you, Judge Fulton. My offer was an advance of $12 million. I will double that. I've thought about this a great deal. I'd like to be rich. Of course I would. But I'd also like to think that this would bring benefits to both East and West. In the end, I decided that there was only one course of action left open to me, to carry out my father's wishes.
can move only one arm. Desperate pain. I know I'm dying. Anyone finding me, please burn formula. World not ready. <laughs>